Hey guys, good news. Wizard of the Coast sales are up and I was trying to figure out how did they do it? Was it because they got really good reviews from customers that are happy about the quality of their product? Or is it because they're trying to drain every last dollar by reprinting everything into oblivion? Let's take a look at the reviews. So Wizard of the Coast has 411 five-star reviews, probably from employees, judges, who are not employees, by the way, just to clarify that point, and web supporters. Now, they have 468 one-stars. Hmm. They have more one-star reviews than five-star reviews. That's normally not very good for a company. Let's read some of them, shall we? After 15 years of commitment to this game, I have decided that I can no longer support their bottom line. The recent witch hunt of players based on personal views posted on social media has left a bad taste in my mouth. I play Magic the Gathering to escape people ramming politics and religion down my throat. And I think that's one of the key components here is we play Magic and we can have different political views. We can have different religions. We can be different and we can still enjoy the game of Magic. Therefore, it makes no sense from a brand standpoint or marketing standpoint that they would choose one side and alienate half their customer base. All right, let's read another one. Played for years after 3rd edition and loved the mechanics, but gave up after I realized how much the term paper crack fit the direction the company went in. They are the original pay to win game company. Card stock quality was always an issue, but never addressed. Thus, deck protectors are born. Now, I slowed down there because my heart was beating a little faster. And I think it makes sense. The number one YouTube channel, Tolarian, what does he do? He does deck protector reviews, binder reviews, sleeve reviews. Those are his most popular videos. But why do we have like, if the card quality was higher and they improved it from the old time to where we could play it literally in the cafeteria, why do we currently have such a huge industry for deck protectors, sleeves, like play mats? Like the card quality stock has got down in time and that's, Fascinating to do. Very good point. All right, next, uh, where to start? Poor card stock, bannings for political reasons, pedophiles in the judge program. Love the game, but Wizard of Coast, the company, has gone down a path that now ha has now split the community. The they banned some players for harassment, but not others who harass those who are banned. The irony of people um, attacking Jeremy is they become Jeremy's. Isn't that hilarious? Really hilarious. Also, don't seem to hold their pros to the same standards as they can tweet about other pros with zero response and repercussions. Not to mention mass cheating in the pro end. They have delivered poor quality products with only a short, sorry, we are working on it how many months, how many years has it been since we've received a product without the massive? It used to be a, a card with, you know, a misprint. It would be more valuable. Oh, this card was misprinted. Okay, it's going to be worth 10 times as much money. Now everything is misprinted. So nothing is worth any money. So the, the sad MTG finance, the sadness I feel for the misprint community I feel great sadness for their value of their collection. Let's take a moment to understand how much value was lost from people with misprint collections. Because now every single card Wizard of the Coast makes is a misprint. I'm really disappointed in the recent behavior of this company in regards to the relevation that there is no vetting process for the judges of their sanctioned events. Really, it just seems like a, the smart thing to do, vetting people who will hold authority positions over underage players at events sanctioned by your organization. Yeah, I mean, is this guy asking for too much? I mean, gosh, like, is that all he really wants? That's incredible. Please reconsider your stance on your vetting process for the judges program. Be the awesome company I know you can be. Just requiring a very simple background check to verify incoming new judges are not on the 
SO registry would really put all of this worry to rest. Beware, if the company doesn't like a meme you post, they can confiscate all of your online gaming and ban you for life. Look up the quartering. Also, can I get a comment on why convicted sex offenders don't have lifetime bans and are able to be judges in own magic stores, but posting a controversial meme in a private Facebook group gets you banned for life? Very good question. That is a very good point. But we all know memes are far more dangerous to children than sexual offenders. I mean, sexual offenders are just so friendly and so nice. Like... For instance, I've only heard positive stuff about Alex Bruccini, and he's the, just the best cheater ever. It's because they're sexual. Okay, let me put it this way. I don't, I'm not going to speak about sexual offenders because I don't really know too much about how they act and behave. I feel like they probably would be like friendly in a creepy way. But for Alex, all reports on Alex Bruccini, the ultimate magic cheater, banned two times, and he's back again is that he was the nicest player to play with. He is an inspiration to Magic players, and he has a huge fan club. Huge. Gigantic. Because he is, quote, nice. But because he's nice doesn't mean he's not a cheater. He's just a nice cheater. All right, let's talk about the reviews. So in marketing, reviews are super important. Like, let's say you go to a dentist or you go to ER, you go to a car dealership. You would want to, or even a restaurant, like a Yelp review. I don't like Yelp. I think Yelp is very gamified in the fact that you can game it by giving them money. So the more money you give Yelp, the better your, your reviews will be. Otherwise, Yelp will get, they will tag your five-star reviews and hold them. And then they will promote the one-star reviews. It's part of their algorithm. I'm almost certain of it because I ran like some tests on it and it came back like, okay, you once you pay them the month the monthly money fee, I think it's like fifty dollars a month, then like all your good reviews pop up and then they reverse it, right? So your good reviews are now up and your bad reviews are hidden. But if you don't pay them, it's the good reviews are hidden and the bad reviews go up. Anyway, let's talk about how important reviews are for the normal brand they're incredibly important if you go to a car dealership and they have bad reviews and people are saying they're selling lemons then you're not going to go there you go to a different car dealership with better reviews and better customer service and normally that's going to work if you have an emergency are you going to go to an emergency room with really bad reviews or are you going to go on one where they love the doctor and the doctor seems to care Hmm. how about a dentist how about a restaurant how about when you buy anime toys i guess that's just for me I don't want to go to, there's a store in a Deerbrook mall. It's called like 3D Games. I'm going to call them out now. They sell fake anima, anime merchandise, like fake. Recently, they said it's on license and they're still selling it because they have so much of it that like, I don't know. But be, when I first went, I was like, hmm, this looks kind of fake. Like, is this fake? And then I went home and it was fake. So yeah, I mean... Yeah, I, I'd like to make decisions based on reviews, and the recent reviews of this company has not been great. It has not been great, and it will affect their bottom line eventually. People will keep leaving bad reviews. They will keep producing very poor quality. So I don't know. I don't know why we still get misprints, quote, misprints all the time. Back when I was playing the game, a misprint was worth a lot of money like cramped, like bent, cut, miscut, you know, double, like the coloring was off, right? That Those things were worth money. Like now it's like, it's like, oh, wow, you didn't get a misprint. That's the, that's the one that's worth extra money is the non-misprint. Well, I feel really sad for all those people who collected misprints because now there's too many of them to collect. And they're not unique anymore. The whole point of mis like there used to be collectors who their whole collection and their pride was to collect misprints. Now, I mean, yeah, it's cool to look at now, but it's really embarrassing because how I mean, I could make a collection as big in terms of size, maybe not in value, of yours by just buying a box. I could just buy a box of a recent set. And the half the things would be like, you know, 
gray and the print will run out of ink. There's no more ink left. Like, how does it get to the point that there's no ink left in the printer and you still sell the product? How expensive is ink? I mean, come on. There was no ink left. It's kind of like a company that is running a printer and they don't want to change the toner because they want to save money. But their proposal for this new really a uh, million dollar client or their proposal for the customer is now like you can't they can't even read it because the ink quality is so low. There's no more ink left. Why would a big company ever do that? Why? How would they ever run out of ink? They print cards like wouldn't that be something they would when did they change the toner before they ran out the toner ran out of ink? I know they have to save money and margins, but like this seems like very basic like common sense. Anyway, that's it. Bye.